How would I sum up an SK? Transcendent. Welcome to the making of Tararua SK, where we're going to uh, take you behind the scenes uh, of our award-winning adventure documentary. I'm Andy. I'm the filmmaker, cameraman, narrator, distributor, uh, and orange boy. And I'm Hans, filmmaker, cameraman, film coach, and editor. Together, we'll break down the highs, the lows, and all the wild moments that went into creating Tararua SK. Really cool to have this opportunity to sit down and chat about the making of our film, which for me was has been an incredible experience over the, the last few years. So really keen to just break down some of the highs and lows and, and to provide some of our audience an insight into went what went on over those over these last two years. I guess going back to where it all started, we've got the amazing Tararua range. And for me, my first kind of real experience around the Tararua range was it's probably fifteen years ago I entered the Tararua Mountain Race, which is a just a wild adventure running race that runs over the Southern Crossing, which is from Kaitoki to, to Otaki. I signed up for the race, and the first time you do it, you have to do it with somebody. You're not allowed to enter it just by yourself. And so my brother-in-law, who was, who was a keen tramper and runner, he he agreed to, to do it with me. And we went on this, we went on this, like, reconnaissance trip or like test trip because you had to have done the route before and I took uh, one of my friends who was a keen runner and keen outdoor guy and we just it was the most harrowing trip like it was in December it snowed it was such so brutal and so much hard work my my friend who came with us still talks about it as being one of the most horrendous days of his life. Wow. <laughs> Before that, though, what attracted you to get into the to the Rangers? Was it the race? Yeah, so that was really the first time that I'd been into the range since I was a kid. Yeah, so I hadn't tramping as many of us do with school groups in the range, but, yeah, since then I hadn't been in there. So. Wow. And so you, you were talking about it being a harrowing, that most harrowing day of his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't put, yeah. So what, what was the outcome of that? So the race was a couple of months later and my brother-in-law, uh, Neil and I, we had this amazing day out, this great adventure and like really hard, but yeah, but amazing. And yeah, so that was, that was the first one. That you sounds like you guys, you got the bug, you got bit after that. Like that was the beginning of many adventures. Yeah, yeah, that was so. Over the next, so every couple of years, the Tararua Mountain Race ran over that route, which was on spectacular, where you actually get onto the tops and you get the real magic of the Tararua Range. And a few years later, I think it might have been, I'm not sure if it was my second or third time that I ran in the race. I, by that stage, I had my GoPro and I recorded, I grabbed some clips from actually doing the race and put together a little three minute kind of smash up of some clips to some music. And yeah, that was yeah, so that was the first footage that I shot in the, the Tararua range. And was that the first film you'd made of, of your adventures? No. Oh. By that stage, I'd been making uh, little films uh, of some other adventures, mainly the, the Great Walk. So two mates and I, we had this little challenge to go and run all of the Great Walks in New Zealand. 
and I got a GoPro camera, I think, you know, for my second or third one of those that we did. And so I'd made these little three or four minute little videos from those adventures. And that was, that was really the start of me making some little videos do those have narration over them or are they just music and pictures they were just music yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah they were, they were pretty basic you know yeah but it was fun and it was my motivation behind that was i really wanted to share these beautiful places with my friends and family yeah yeah and yeah, so you had a lot of adventures in the Tarara Ranges before you even began making, thinking about making a film. Yeah. Particularly the races, I suppose. But then you learned about the, through, through your journey, you learned about the, the SK Traverse and the different yeah. challenges. Yeah, so not long, not long after making that first little video of the race, I came across the mountain running community in Wellington. And I started reading about the SK and it just completely blew my mind. And by that stage, we'd run these great walks. We're looking for what's next. And there were these trip reports about the SK and also other routes in the Tararua. And I was really it was amazing timing because it, it was like within a few months of me meeting up with this group and starting to join in on some of their runs and read about some of their adventures. They were having the first ever SK Awards night. And I managed to wrangle my way into coming along and I offered to video record the event. And this, some of the footage in the film is from that very first awards night. And being, you know, after reading the trip reports, which were just they were like these incredible adventure stories, to then being there at that awards night. And I know for me, and I, I'm sure for many others in the room, if you hadn't done an SK by that stage, you were, I was like, it was only a matter of when you were going to try because was so motivating and inspiring being in that room hearing everybody talk about their adventures on the range do you remember what anything what it was in particular that really drew you to reading the trip reports and people retelling their adventures at the awards night was it was what was in what was in, from those in particular that really grabbed you it, it was this heart and spirit of adventure it, it was just People pushing themselves and doing just something really crazy and out there in a really wild environment. There's being uh, traversing the length of a range where, you know, for a good portion of it, there's no track. There's just a route and it's just, it's wild and it's beautiful. The pictures you'd see and, and, People trying to do it in a single push, which is the six-day full-on advanced tramp. And people are trying to do it in a single push. And the first trip reports I was reading, like the kind of the standard start time was at four or five o'clock in the morning. See, people are going and staying up near Ekerahuna, Patara, the road end, sleeping in the backs of their cars or sleeping in a tent on the side of the road, getting up at four o'clock in the morning, putting on the headlamps and just trying to traverse this whole length of the range. And the elite runners were doing it in under 24 hours. And yeah, yeah it was just that whole Amazing. adventurous spirit was just, it was captivating. Yeah. And so you had the options, people have the options of doing different length traverses. So you've got your dat, you've got your 24 hour one, the elite runners, you've got the 48 hour and then the three day. Is that right? The history behind the, the route is that back in the 60s, the tramping clubs created this weekend challenge where you'd leave work on Friday night and you'd, you'd catch the train up to Ikarahuna and then you'd start 
you'd tramp into the first hut, stay the night, and then try and complete the length of the range over over the weekend and get back in time for work for Monday morning. And yeah, then over the years it morphed into, from a very early stage, people were wanting to know whether they could do it in a single push and do it in under 24 hours. And I think 1995, Colin Ralph did that. He was the first to do that. Yeah, so after the awards night, hearing about this, I planned my first attempt. Uh, and at the end of that year, often you people plan attempts on the longest, close to the longest day of the year, so you've got as much light as possible. So you've got less time in the dark. And so that was, that's always in December. So in December we had the, the first attempt and yeah, and I got about eight hours in and badly sprained my ankle and yeah, had to hobble out. Yeah. Yeah. Gee. Yeah. yeah. But that didn't stop you. <laughs> no. But did you, was it a couple of years later that you, did you, you had your second attempt? So yeah. Yeah. that that required a bit of considering getting yourself back up to the was it a fitness level thing as well like being ready for it fitness wise what, what kind of things do you need to do to keep yourself you can't just run in there on a yeah there's definitely a massive kind of fitness component there's also quite a lot of logistics as well to you've got to find you've got to find a weather window and that's really hard in the range mm, yeah I had to you have to do that, and then you've got to find some time where you're, where you can be flexible to fit in with the weather window. Yeah, it it, it took a little bit. That kind of all takes a bit, and it also takes a fair bit of mental motivation to put yourself into that situation, which is yeah, that's hard. It's it's a hard thing to do. Yes. Yeah. A second attempt with my mate Anthony. It was about a year and a bit after the first attempt. And we were very late in the season. We wanted to get this in, wanted to try and complete the, the route before winter came. And so, yeah, that meant we we had a change of approach. We tried starting at nine o'clock at night instead of first thing in the morning. And... Yeah, and that didn't go very well. We got just over halfway and, yeah, completely physically and mentally broken. Was that the one where you, you had to sleep outdoors at night? Uh, so, no, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. But we travelled first seven hours in the dark. And we got. And, th- and this is a place where there's no tracks. A lot. Yeah. So was that going through areas where there weren't any tracks? Yeah, we got lost yeah. for a while. Wow. Yeah. In the dark, mm. in the clag, and yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you're using um, GPS, and you know, you've got your what, what do you call it, Garmin or? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I still managed to get lost even yeah, with yeah. that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, yeah, and the interesting thing is though, like all these adventures you're going on, mm. you were pretty much filming. All, you were taking a GoPro along on most of them or all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the time, from that time of that first mountain race, through to when we made the film, you know, I counted up. It was like seventeen different adventures that I'd gone on in the range with my mates. And had filmed footage and put together little short videos, mainly just to music, of of our time in the range. And yeah, I had a lot, lots of beautiful footage across all of the different seasons in in the range. So we had snow snowy trips and uh, summer trips and yeah. And I guess, yeah, without knowing it, you'd already started making the film a decade ago or longer. Yeah. 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 As as my wife says, when you ask the question, how long did it take you to make the film? She would say 10 years. Yeah. 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 That would be accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's so good that you did take the time to film all these adventures. And, and just to circle back to that trip that you got the helicopter out on. Mm. Yeah, that, so that was captured. You'd captured that as well. I think we've used your some of that adventure in the film 
it's in the helicopter shot yeah so, yeah but yeah you were capturing everything as you were going there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah and so i think it was yeah you so you failed too yeah and how did you feel after that second failure it was really hard and yeah i'd never i don't know it felt really like something i'd never experienced to that degree before like I'd failed at lots of different stuff, but had never had kind of something that had broken me as much mentally. And that was a really disconcerting experience. And yeah, it was really... Did you give up? Was it a, Had you given up at that point? or? Yeah, I think I had given up. I Doing, doing the SK as a, as a single push is... Like it's a very hard physical and mental thing to do, and for me, I'm not a, I'm not an elite runner like many of the people that I was reading about or the people that I would I was hanging out with in the mountain running community. I was it was a survival thing, and you know, and it was breaking me. <laughs> so yeah, that's where reading David Goggins book can't hurt me mm. who and that was really pivotal because there's there was a really amazing lesson in there mm. about how when you face adversity how to go through and debrief that so that you are actually dealing with the facts of what happened and and every time you face challenge the there's always some things that you could have done better, but there's also always a bunch of things that you've done well. And it's really easy mentally to get into a spiral, mm. a negative spiral, because you wanted to do something and you couldn't do it or you didn't do it. And so that really helped me identify, okay, what are the things that I did well that worked? Okay, and there were quite a lot of those things. What were some of the things that I did wrong and that I could do better next time? And there were a bunch of those. And so that helped me break it down to give me the really the motivation to go and try again. Right, yeah. It's so easy to just to dwell on the your feelings uh, that you felt afterwards, the negative feelings, and yeah. you forget about all the great wins and successes you had along the way and, and ways you can improve them. And is there something else he talks about? I haven't read his book, but I've heard that it's, he talk, also talks about separating the physical from the mental. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So did that mind, does that help when you're, <laughs> when you're up against it in the ranges to like the... Okay, my body can still go, but my mind's giving up. So is that what he means? Or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's yeah, there's a huge amount around that. And yeah, our bodies are capable of far more than our mind is capable of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm just having a look at my notes. Yeah, cool. So yeah, look, you did seventeen. So you did seventeen trips with your GoPro. I didn't realize you'd done seventeen. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's why there was so many you cl so many GoPro clips for you to yeah. review, Hans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was a delight. And I, I suppose we'll we'll get into that, won't we? Cause we will. But that yeah. was yeah, that was fundamental for the film. Yeah, absolutely fundamental. Okay, so you completed your first SK, and that was solo. No, no. So. There were, there were four of us that started out together and one of my mates didn't have enough time to do, so he just came for the first four hours or so with us and then turned back and uh, went back. So he you know, dropped us at the road end and then the three of us continued and yeah, I got to a point where I needed to stop for a couple of hours to... Yeah, I was just physically broken, so I just needed to recover and get some food and just have a little bit of a rest. My other uh, two friends, they continued, and and they, yeah, quite a few hours later, I stumbled in 
<laughs> completing mine, yeah. Into that into that uh, car park. The, the, the car park of glory. The car park of glory, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the clip in the film is you looking pretty shattered, but you managed to film yourself. <laughs> yeah. And you've got nothing to say. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think it must have taken a bit of effort to even turn the camera on at that point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It took a lot of effort yeah. to get get down those last few hours mm. down that Marchant Ridge. Yeah. That was yeah. Big, it was a big day. And that's uh, one of the, uh, I think, is it Gary in the film who talks about Marchant Ridge? Yeah. So it's obviously the, uh, that's a testing part of the SK. Yeah. It's kind of the last big stretch. Mm. And. Yeah, and it's not flat, as none of the roof, route is flat. And you hope that it would be a little bit more downhill than what it is. So, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough long ridge. Yeah, yeah. when you're when you're exhausted <laughs> and you've been going for many hours. But at that point, you can't really stop because you've got you stop you because you just got to keep going and yeah, yeah. Push through it. Yeah. Push through the hardship. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you completed that. And then, you know, how did you feel? Oh, look, I was absolutely, uh, I was thrilled. Like I was mm. really thrilled to finally complete it. I go mentally, it was like a massive relief to have had this goal, failed twice and to finally get there. It was a massive, it was a massive relief. <laughs> and I felt really sore, like I was exa absolutely exhausted. I think it took took me quite a few weeks to recover. It was Christmas holidays, so that was really nice. I just hung out at the beach and went swimming and, and yeah, recovered. But it must have been great to finally realize or understand or feel like what everyone else had going back to the trip reports you'd read on the awards evening and being able to you must have finally understood or the pull of the sk yeah it was immensely satisfying to finally complete it yeah it yeah. was very cool and so then you so you completed that in 2019 and then i suppose that takes us into the starting to come to the filmmaking part of the story yeah Sorry, my papers are probably making lots of sound, so I'll start that again. Yeah, so at some point after finishing completing the SK, and oh, I have to ask, did you do it again? And that, apart from what we'll talk about soon. No. You to, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took that one off. <laughs> you didn't go back the next week, obviously. No. no. <laughs> no. Yep. Be sure to check out Tararoa SK at tararoask.com. Also screening on Apple TV, Prime Video, and in New Zealand. Thanks for joining us. What's your next adventure? Boom. Done. <laughs>